If I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. When it comes to Disney Plus shows, it's all about the execution. I've, I've never said that before. The Book of Boba Fett, Episode 3, entitled The Streets of Mos Espa, starts out with 88 breaking down the history of Jabba's and Bib Fortuna's reigns as daimyo. Steven Root comes to inform Fett that no one respects him, and if he could dispose of a street gang for him, his tribute would be doubled. Upon speaking with the gang, he sides with them, seeing that the watermonger was overcharging them. He enlists the gang to work for him. People modifying their bodies with droid parts isn't new. In the book Last Shot, the antagonists were droid human cyborgs. Back in the back to tank, we resume our story in the past. Vet travels to Moss Eisley to visit with the Pike Syndicate and finds that they've been paying the bike gang for protection. Vet says that he will take care of them and returns to the camp to find it destroyed and the Tuscans murdered with the symbol of the swoop gang present. He sets a funeral pyre for them. We're literally pulled out of the sequence by Black Kersantan, who attacks Boba. He falters with his armor and turns to his gaffy stick. The Wookiee starts to crush Boba, and he's saved by the street gang he enlisted, along with the Gamorrean guards. The fight continues into the throne room, and Fennec traps the Wookiee in the Rancor pit. A feast is prepared, and Boba doesn't partake. The Hut twins arrive and brought him a gift in the form of a Rancor with Danny Trejo as the keeper. The twins tell Boba that they're leaving and that he should too, and to do what he wants with Black Hersantan. He releases him and tells him not to work for Scum. Boba talks with the Keeper, and he apparently bonds with the Rancor. The Keeper says that they're bred for fighting, but are peaceful and less threatened. There's a kinship there, since Boba himself was created for the same purpose. Boba, Fennec, and the gang go to see the Mayor, and the Major Domo runs. The gang gives chase through the streets of Mos Espa. One of the gang even crashes through a Ralph McQuarrie painting. He finally comes to a stop, back to the future style, and says that the Mayor is working with the Pikes. One of the gang report back that lots of pikes have arrived. Fennec says that war is coming. This is by far the weakest episode in the series so far. In fact, it may be the weakest Star Wars episode on Disney+. Plus. And you know what? It's, it's, it may be the weakest Disney Plus show of all the properties that I've seen so far. Mm. There's a significant and obvious discount type look to this episode. It's just not good. I mean, like the chase, I can't stand how slow and cheap that it looks. I mean, it looks like Spy Kids, maybe just cheesy CG and compositing and it just doesn't look good. And even the music in, in this sequence in particular is pretty uninspired. And I have to say, that's something that I've been sort of feeling, you know, ever since the, the season started, I'm just not really into the into the score at all. It could be just a direction thing because I mean, if you compare the chase scene in this episode to the train scene, the train heist in the previous episode, I mean, it's a world of difference. It just it it's just not up to par. I'm actually a little bit disappointed that uh, you know story wise the the Tuscans are basically gone and just out of it and. They were built up so much in the previous two episodes that it's, you know, to just be almost thrown away so quickly in this episode kind of makes you go, then why did we spend so much time with them? It's, it's, it's very strange. It, it, I don't even know what, what's going on there. I don't know if it's a, I, I mean, it just felt like this was going to be something that was going to go throughout, you know what I mean? And then he was going to spend spend a lot of time with the Tuscans, furthering his sort of growth as a character, you know, the the, the idea of, of community and uh, kinship and all that sort of thing. Yeah, no, that, that's just, that's just gone now. It's really sort of strange. One can only hope that this is merely a blip on an otherwise upward trajectory. Seriously, it's, it's hard to, to be excited after an episode like this. I mean, it's it's hard for me to be like really hopeful for what's coming. I I don't I don't know where this is going. I don't really know if I care too much, which is not good for a show that I was really really excited about. I'd probably give this uh I don't know, like a 2 out of 4 stars. Uh maybe a 2.5 just because I think the Black Croissant 
sequence was was pretty sweet. But you know, I mean, yeah, you've got you've got some characterization uh, with Boba and the Rancor. I mean, there's there's a there's a kinship there that I, I kind of appreciate character wise. But look, you know, one of the best things about playing in the Star Wars universe is you've got all these characters and places and history to draw upon, right? To tell your story. But that doesn't mean that we automatically need all of those connections all the time. Don't make it about the connections. Make it, make it about telling a really, really good, effective, lean story. But don't forget to execute. Because this one, I feel like it could have been better, and I would have felt better about it if that chase scene didn't look so amateurish. So what did you think about uh, the Streets of Mos Espa, episode three, right? I mean, did, did, were you kind of like me and you were kind of like, hmm, this, wow, that was not executed well. Or were you kind of like, hey, the characterization stuff is kind of cool. I mean, Boba even had trouble with his armor because he, you know, he's more comfortable with a gaffy stick, you know, all of those things are, are, are something to consider. So let me know down below what you're thinking about it, because I like talking about this stuff. I think it's fun. So... Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.